I built this simple frame with mitered corners and it's held together with pocket screws. To connect the frame to the sleeve, we're going to start with this very large piece of molding. It'll take up most of the distance between the two faces, and then we'll turn to this smaller piece to finish the gap. When you're working with crown molding, it's important to remember that you have to cut it upside down. You have to imagine the bed of your saw as the ceiling and the fence as the wall. It's really easy to get slightly different angles each time you cut this. So what I like to do is place the molding up against the fence, and once I have it in place, bring in a stop block and get repeatable cuts every time. Take your time when cutting large pieces like this and let the saw come to a full stop before raising it. If you raise the blade while it's still spinning, you run the risk of the teeth catching on the molding and ruining the super crisp edge that you just created. And after all, creating great miters is all about maintaining these crisp edges. We hope this build gave you the confidence to tackle your next molding project. And we hope it inspired you to see that you can combine off-the-shelf pieces to build up a unique shape.